just finished Clockwork Angel and um, I am confused. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Stephanie's Laurelin. I'm Stephanie. Today's video is a really really exciting video and I'm so excited to film it. I know I literally just said excited but I'm really excited to film this. I have been wanting to read this book for so long, for so many months and I'm I'm over the moon. I'm so ecstatic to be reading this book right now. So this video is going to be a spoiler filled reading vlog of me reading Clockwork Angel, the first book in the Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare for the first time. I wanted to do a spoiler filled reading vlog for it because I'm sure most people have read this book and for me I love watching reading vlogs, spoiler filled reading vlogs of books that I've already read and loved. So yeah, that's the plan. I already started this last night actually but I only read the first chapter so not many thoughts so far except for the fact that I am already in love with Will and Jem. Like this is going to be a wild ride. I'm really excited. I hope you enjoy this video. If you'd like to, subscribe and I'll come back to you when I start reading it properly. Woo! pages into this but I want to do an update because one I'm loving it so much and two I wanted to kind of explain why I chose to read this and not start reading the Mortal Instruments first so I have the first book in the Mortal Instruments and the second book and I tried to read those and then I stopped because I didn't really like them I did watch the series on Netflix though so I know kind of the backstory of this the world that these books are set in and the magic system and stuff like that like slightly because I didn't watch it all and it was ages ago when I watched it but I just wanted to say that I do understand some of the stuff hence why I picked up this one rather than reading the other books first and I was told and I've heard that you don't have to read the other books in order to read these ones so yeah I am 74 pages in, like I said, so I'm on chapter four now and I love it so much. It's so funny and witty and I just love that it's set in the 18th century because I love things that are set in the 18th century and I'm really fascinated by the whole magic system and world, even though I'm only after getting a little bit of it, um, but it just reminded me of the fascination I had for the world when I was watching the series on Netflix and yeah it's just amazing and the characters are so good like I love Tessa and I love Will I haven't really gotten to meet Jem yet and oh Henry is really funny as well it's just so interesting all the characters are so cool and funny and lovable in their own way even though I'm literally 74 pages into it but oh I'm loving this so much yeah I don't really know I don't have much else to say but I just wanted to update and tell you what well, the reason why I'm reading this and what I'm thinking of it so far so yeah I'll come back when I have <laughs> more actual thoughts to share with you <laughs>
random but I just wanted to read out a line that I just thought was weird and oddly phrased so basically someone is being de described their appearance is being described and they're described as <laughs> talking about his neck his shirt was open at the neck showing a strong throat a strong throat I've never read anyone describe someone else's appearance as them having a strong throat like what's the significance of that <laughs> that's the first thing I wanted to say and the other is that I wish I had a physical copy of this so bad because I love it so much and I want to annotate it so bad there's so many lines in here that I just want to highlight and annotate and oh wow I love it there's um a quote here that I wanted to read now I need to find it so basically Will and Tessa are in the great library and they're talking about books and Tessa's like asking for like generic novels like Little Women and um A Tale of Two Cities and stuff like that Tessa's asking like all the books are behind bars like they're it looks like a literary sort of prison and then Will is saying some of these books are dangerous it's wise to be careful and then this is a part I would have annotated if I had my own copy so I just want to read it out to you because I need to acknowledge it in some way um Tessa then says one must always be careful of books and what is inside them for words have the power to change us oh Tessa is just such such a bad bitch I love her she's so cool Will goes on to say that um I'm not sure a book has ever changed me and then talks about unless there's a book that could show me how to change into a flock of sheep which random but I mean okay well and then Tessa goes only the very weak-minded refuse to be influenced by literature and poetry queen queen but anyways I'm on page 92 and I am loving this book so much if you didn't guess that by what I've already said already Will I love Will so much he's so funny and just wow I love Will and Tessa as well like I said what bad bitch she's a queen I love her she's so intelligent and cool I just love her and I'm really excited to meet Jem I still haven't met Jem properly yet so very excited for that but yeah I just wanted to remark on how random that one line of description was and then the fact that I want to annotate this so bad so for the next videos I'm doing in this series I will hopefully have my own physical copy of the two other books in this trilogy so yeah I'll come back to you whenever I have something else to say Okay, I literally just put down the camera, but I wanted to say that I'm living for Will going all feminism on Tessa and talking about Bodeca or Bodica. I don't really know how to say her name. But basically, he's like going on a spiel about how she was a war a powerful warrior queen and she was braver than any man. He's talking about books with Tessa and then oh I just love this. I love this part. He starts laughing at Tessa because she's like going off on what about these certain books that he's already read and she's like gushing about them. And then Will says, I've never seen anyone get so excited over books before you think they were diamonds. And then Tessa replies, well, they are, aren't they? Isn't there anything you love like that? And then I just thought that part in itself was like cute and relatable. And then this part, like I really want to know more about Will's backstory because this is the second or third time now that... Tessa has alluded to recognising the sort of darkness in his gaze and like him gazing off in space per se. She's saying everyone has something they can't live without. I'll find what it is for you. Never you fear. And then she says she meant to speak lightly but the, at the look on his face her voice trailed off into uncertainty. He was looking at her with an odd steadiness. I love Will and Tessa. But I also know that it's supposed to be a love triangle and that Jem is in that love triangle. So I'm really interested in that because I really want to meet Jem. But then also when I read the first part of it, basically the prologue, is, Tessa isn't in the prologue. And um, basically Will and Jem kind of kill off a demon. And the vibes I was getting from that, I like, I know a lot of people will probably disagree with me and I'm probably not favoring to other people's ships right now but and i don't know if they more have more like of a brotherly relationship because obviously i haven't read much of them but they are best friends i assume 
and I kind of have a feeling they could be what's it called like a perbatite thing where they're like their souls are like as one or something I remember that from the show and I always find that really fascinating but I think they could be cute together don't kill me but anyways that's all I wanted to say I need to stop like I literally stop every two seconds and I'm like, oh, I have another thing I want to say. I have another thing I want to say. I need to actually read the book. I'm going to go and actually read it now. The things I'm updating you on are probably really insignificant. But I just read a part with Tessa and Will. And Will gets a little bit angry. And I really like it. I can't wait to find out more about Will. I want to know who he is, where he's from everything i want to know everything about this man but basically tessa like assumes a load of things because he, he's like you can think what you like it's not as if you know anything about me and then tessa's like i know this 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 i know this i know this i know this and then um she says i know you're an orphan so <laughs> probably a bad decision on her part to say that and he goes he's like really angry and he goes i never said i was an orphan will spoke with unexpected savagery and i loathe poetry excuse me sir you do not you just quoted poetry for the past like two chapters but anyways so as it happens you really don't know anything about me at all do you and with that he spun on his heel and walked away what drama queen he really had a little a little hissy fit for himself just thought that little piece of conflict was interesting and very entertaining because i love dramatic people still only on page 96 <laughs> I need to actually read it a bit more and not update you on every single piece of dialogue that I like. It's getting to be a bit much. Okay, I'm stopping to do yet another update. Are we surprised? But I want to read out this line that I think is beautiful. And again, if I had my own copy, I would be annotating it. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is actually a library copy. So hence why I'm not annotating it. But I wanted to read it so I could acknowledge it because it's beautiful. Tessa is reading the Shadowhunters Codex because Will gave it to her and told her that it's it's a good way to understand the Shadowhunters kind of realm and their world. But he says you'll never understand us from reading a book. And then she says, she, or she thinks, but that wasn't the point really. He didn't know what books meant to her, that books were symbol of truth and meaning, that this one acknowledged that she existed and that there were others like her in the world. Holding it in her hands made Tessa feel that everything that had happened to her in the past six weeks was real. More real even than living through it had been. And I just think that that's such... Oh my god, the glare. Oh, that's so annoying. But I just think that that's such a good description on how books make people feel and why people love and are so attached to certain books because they relate to things that happen in books and things that characters go through that are parallels of their own life possibly well for me anyways that's why I think I love certain books the way I do because I connect with them so much and I just think that that was a really good way of describing the worth of books to a lot of people Tessa is an intellectual I just read such a sweet part in this book I love Will and Jem. I finally have met Jem and Tessa has finally met Jem and Jem is a gem. Literally he's a gem. I love him. And I love Will and Jem together and they're like dynamic. Oh I love him. Oh my god the thing that just happened was kind of sad. I keep forgetting that this is a spoiler filled vlog so I can actually talk about the stuff I want to say. But Jem had like a coughing fit and he must be sick in some way because he started coughing blood. And Will was just so nice and like concerned and soft and it was just so cute. But I also want to mention that my best friend actually is a big fan of these books and she has read these books like years ago. And she was one of the reasons why I wanted to read these books. And I was telling her about me reading them and... She decided to pick her copy up and reread it with me. So we're having a little buddy read moment. And it's so cool to be able to like talk to her about the book and how amazing it is and all my favourite parts. Yeah, I'm going to keep reading. I'm literally still only on page 108. I'm barely reading this. I'm reading it so slow. I don't know why, but I'm really taking in the information and enjoying it.
while I'm reading it. Will and Jem and Tessa deserve the world and I literally know them about five minutes. Okay, I don't know if it's just me, but a lot of the things I'm reading, it feels like they're being repeated. Like Tessa mentioned something about her brother, seeing her brother intoxicated and and knowing what a drunk person looks like. And she just mentioned it again. And like, it was her inner di dialogue. So it wasn't like she was saying it to someone. And it was pretty much the same thing she said before, which I thought was weird. And then I was like, maybe it's just like, you know, just a thing. But it just happened again with her describing how she looks in the mirror and how she thinks after her change, like how does she know whether her appearance is her real appearance now? And it was phrased in the exact same way it was as the first time it was mentioned. And I genuinely went to look back because I thought I had misplaced where I was and had went back a few pages and reread the same passage. But I didn't. It was a totally different passage. But she says the exact same thing or she thinks the exact same thing. And I just think it's, it's probably more of a poor construction of writing in my opinion now I could be totally wrong in that because I do not write books but from what I can tell it doesn't really have significance to the story well yet anyways and I don't think it will unless it might but I really don't think it will and it's just in my opinion kind of poor writing and not edited correctly but I just wanted to mention that because it was kind of niggling at me a little bit at the start when I first noticed it and now I'm after noticing again so I just wanted to mention it because it's a bit odd Hi, it's the next day now I actually had school all day today because today is Monday so I didn't get to read at all today except for a tiny bit in the morning if you maybe saw that. Last night I got to page 222 and I'm on chapter 10. I can't really remember what the last thing I updated was. I think it might have been Jem finally meeting Tessa and him being sick and how that like thing happened where the writing was really weird where it was felt like it was already written. I did actually find out that Will and Jem are Parvati, if that's how you say that word, um, which is really cool and really interesting. I think now after reading that, I'm kind of like in my head, Will and Jem are not a thing. I really like Will and Tessa, or not Will and Tessa, I love Will and Tessa. I really like Tessa and Jem together as well. They've had a little few cute moments. Oh, I love the two separate lads with her. Oh, I don't know. Basically, right now, what's happening is Tessa and Will are going into De Quincey's. I think that's his name. Yeah, De Quincey's kind of mansion where he holds parties that he kind of cuts up humans or mundanes at. And they're going there to kind of call him out and get evidence of him having these bad parties so that the shadow hunters or the clave can do something about it because the last known place that Tessa's brother Nate was seen at was one of these parties so that's the plan that's what they're going to do I think the chapter I left off on they were just um Tessa and Will are in the coach on the way to the party so I'm really interested and really excited to see how this goes down. I'm, I think, 46% of the way through this now. So my plan is to hopefully finish it by Wednesday. Today is Monday, like I said. It's about half seven, almost eight o'clock. Um, so I do need to go to bed early tonight. So I won't be reading for ages. But hopefully I can make a good dent into it. Oh, I can't wait for the drama that's about to happen. Will just called her Tess. Will just called her Tess and and she referred to uh, is it called the institute I don't even know but wherever the shadow hunters all live where she's been home she's just called it home stop lads I'm not able I'm gonna cry I'm too emotionally fragile for these children <gasps> they're literally the same age as me and I'm calling them children but you know what I mean <laughs> oh my god Stop.
Will just did something that made me love him even more than I thought I could ever. And he said something that I literally did. Basically, Tessa's really scared about going in to the vampire party thing, as she should. And Will is like, sometimes when I have to do something I don't want to, I pretend I'm a character from a book. It's easier to know what they would do. I love this man. I love this man. Okay, but Will and Tessa quoting lines from books to each other is about the most romantic shit I've ever read. It's so cute. I actually cannot deal. Hello. Oh my it's God. Tuesday. And I think the last time I updated you was last night. And I was, can't remember what page I was on, but I was talking about Will and Tessa and them being really cute. Um, I'm on page 310 now, which is chapter 14. And the tables have turned quite a bit. So I would think I was talking about how they were kind of flirting and stuff and um, they were at the vampire party, but it might have been after the vampire party. I'm not really sure. Right now, um, Tessa's brother is in the institute with them because he got saved from this vampire party and the whole kind of clave of shadow hunters came in and killed all the vampires. Will and Tessa and Jem and all the others in the gang came home to the institute and Tessa ends up walking in on a conversation between Will, Jem and Charlotte and Will is kind of shitting on Nate. He's having another one of his hissy fits and he's like, why is Nate here? He's taking up space. We don't know who he is. All this kind of shit. And Tessa hears this and walks in and is like, Will, what are you doing, sir? And she gets really mad at him. Oh, did I mention? I don't, hold on. I wrote a list because I knew I'd forget. Before Tessa overhears Will giving out, the night of the party, Will actually ingests some vampire blood and he's up in his room trying to like drain it out of him or whatever. And Tessa goes up to give him medicine and they end up kissing. And it's a really cute moment. And it's like, <gasps> but then Will has a bit of a freak out and he's like, oh my God, get out. So then the next morning, Tessa walks in on Will chatting shit about her brother and so she's obviously really mad at him but Will is furious when he's talking about Nate so clearly something is up with Mans um yeah so that happened and Tessa kind of went off on a strop and Jem is such an angel because he followed her and is now on the chapter I left off he's bringing her to his favorite place in London and I can't wait for the cute moments that's gonna happen in between them but I love Will and I love Jem so I, I want to talk separately a bit about Will and Jem as characters separately and together so Will we don't know much of his backstory and who he is and I really want to know more about him because I'm so intrigued by him and I love him to bits even though he's having his hissy fits He's a bit of a drama queen, but we love that about him, right? Jem, on the other hand, I know as well that we have to find out more about him and he has an interesting backstory too and I'm really interested in hearing about him. But why I like the two characters separately and why I think loads of people end up falling in love with this these stories and these characters is because Will is kind of your bubbly bad boy that everyone loves. Not exactly a bad boy, but like He's witty and funny and sarcastic and provocative. And then on the inside, he's like broken and he has like anger issues and like issues. And I know like we love that type of man. And then Jem is like this real soft boy on the outside, whereas Will's a soft boy on the inside. But Jem is a real soft boy on the outside, but he's also like broken inside. And clearly with his illness or something, I still haven't found out more about that, but he is damaged as they all are, which is again, what we love to see in a man. And I think their individual personalities and their relationship is so interesting because they balance each other out. Like there's a part in the book where Jem is, where Tessa's talking to Jem or else Tessa is thinking about Jem and how he reacts to Will and how he doesn't give Will a reaction and he actually doesn't kind of play up and play into Will's sarcastic behavior and kind of him trying to get a rise out of other people because people have a tendency to, when talking to Will, if he ends up getting angry, which he usually does, and he 
kind of lashes out. Jem listens and rationalizes things and doesn't give him a reaction and then therefore actually understands him and what the point he's trying to get across which I just think is so interesting and I love them to the two of them together and how they interact and how they so understand each other. I did mark a few pages that I wanted to read out and I'm pretty sure it's Jem that says it but they're basically just really nice quotes that again if I was annotating I would be annotating. Jem is talking to Tessa and Tessa's kind of like when she changed into Camille she's thinking she doesn't know where her anger came from because she ended up kind of like attacking De Quincey when De Quincey was attacking her. Jem says, and this is the part where I'm like, wow, he is a poet. I love Jem. He says, whatever you are physically, male or female, strong or weak, ill or healthy, all those things matter less than what your heart contains. If you have the soul of a warrior, you are a warrior. Whatever the colour, the shape, the design of the shade that conceals it, the flame inside the lamp remains the same. You are that flame. King! He knows what he's talking about. That was just beautiful. He's talking about her again in the same conversation. And basically she says that she, wish, she wishes she never learnt what she was and this world of shadow hunters that it was easier before. And then Jem replies and says, sometimes our lives can change so fast that the change outpaces our minds and hearts. It's those times, I think, when our lives have altered, but we still long for the time before everything was altered. That is when we feel the greatest pain. I can tell you though, from experience, you grow accustomed to it. You learn to live your new life and you can't imagine or even remember how things were before. Then he says this thing about Will and this is what I mean by like him understanding and stuff. And I just love that straight away Tessa gets Will and she understands where he's coming from. And she's not just like brushing him off. She's saying that she didn't mean what she said upstairs. Basically, she was complaining about the shadow hunters or the Nephilim as they refer to it as. And she was saying how horrible they are basically. And then she says, um, I didn't mean the stuff I said. And then Jem replies, I know you didn't mean it. If you did, you wouldn't be leaving your brother like helpless with us. Then Tessa says, Will didn't really mean what he said either, did he? He wouldn't hurt Nate. And then this part is where I'm like, yes, queen. Because Jem recognizes this as well and says it to her. He goes, um, you're correct, but I'm surprised you know it. I know it, but I've had years to understand Will, to know when he means what he says and when he doesn't. And then, which that in itself is like, yes, 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 yes. And then, uh, or Tessa goes, so you don't ever get angry with him. And this kind of is referring back to what I said earlier about Jem knowing how to deal and understand Will and care for Will because he says, I would hardly say that sometimes I want to strangle him. Jem just knows how to handle Will and how to care for him in the best way possible. And it's clear that Tessa is understanding that too. And hopefully I can finish it. Um, if not, I will definitely finish it tomorrow. So Jem and Tessa are on their little walk and they're on the bridge, which is Jem's favorite place in London. And they're talking about Will. And this kind of alludes to what Will's backstory might be, which I find really interesting because um, when I read it, I just thought of Andrew Minyard. So if any of you have read the All for the Game series, you know who that is. Um, and it just reminded me of his, there's a specific word for it and I can't remember it, but it's like photographic memory, but like more intense, there's a proper scientific word that sounds fancier, but I cannot remember it at this moment in time. So Tessa quotes a bit of a book and then Jem replies, Will reads constantly and has an excellent memory. There's very little he does not remember. And then this is the part that gets me because it's, uh, this is why I feel like something really bad happened to him and he remembers it in vivid detail and that he possibly has something like PTSD or something. That could be me just totally stretching. But Tessa says that there was something in his voice that lent weight to his assertion beyond the mere statement of fact, which is really interesting to me. This cute part, she goes, you like Will, don't you? I mean, you're fond of him. And then Jem replies, I love him as if you were my brother, matter of factly. And then um, Tessa says this and I'm just like, yes, I love when there's a character that's so mean to everyone else, but is nice to that one person. And you can tell that they care for that one person. I love it. So um, Tessa says, you can say that however hard he is to everyone else. He loves you. He's kind to you. 
what did you ever do to make him treat you so differently from all the rest? And basically then Jem goes on a big spiel and we find out more about Will's backstory, which is really interesting. She's say He's saying that he found out this information from Charlotte and that Will never told him himself. And then Tessa says, and, you ever, and you've never asked him why. And then he says, if you wanted me to know, he'd tell me, which I mean, oh, King, we love respecting boundaries. You asked me why I think he tolerates me better than other people. I'd imagine it's precisely because I have never asked him why. King Gem, love him. He is a gem. And I'm so interested to find out more about not only Will's backstory and everything that happened to him. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. These updates keep getting so long, but I'm, I'm definitely not going to finish this tonight. But um, I will try my best. Okay, two things I want to say. One, I just, I understand this is a YA book and it's an old YA book. Um, but I just hate when main characters are like, oh, you should have let the bad guy have me. It would have been better. This person wouldn't have got hurt. Basically, Tessa just did that, which was really annoying, but I understand why it happens and it's just YA books. But, um, Jem and Tessa were on, a br on the bridge and they got attacked by loads of those clockwork machine things that De Quincey made. And now they're back at the institute. Everyone's okay. Jem kind of had a little bit of an accident and he wasn't doing okay. But now he's kind of stable. And Will comes in to the drawing room or whatever room that the other lads are chatting at after being with Jem. And is like, Jem is awake and he wants to talk to you. And then Tessa goes, is he all right? Is he well enough? And then... I just love how protective Will is of Jem. Oh my god. Because he goes, Will's expression didn't change. He wants to talk to you, he said, enunciating each word very clearly. So you will get up and you will come with me and you will talk to him. Do you understand? <laughs> he's so protective and he's like, bitch, come here right now. I love it. I love when it's like an injured love interest and the other love interest is like concerned for them. Or, like, even just an injured character and someone who cares about them is worried for them. I just love that. But especially I love when it's a man that's injured. I don't know why. <laughs> I just like when a man is injured and, like, the love interest, whether it's a girl or a boy, but most of the time a girl. Um, I like when she's all, like, comforting and stuff. And it's not the man comforting the woman. Do you get me? Yeah, anyways. Not that I would like seeing Gemma Payne because he's the sweetest thing. But, yeah. I'm loving this right now. I'm on page 336 and I don't think I'll finish it tonight, but yeah. <sighs> I love Will and Jem and Tessa. I literally just put down the camera, but I think we're about to find out about what Jem's illness is. And also I love when characters have like nicknames for each other and then when something serious happens, they like call them by their given name, what actually happened to Jem and what his like illness is. I'm going to guess that it's something like an addiction to opium or something possibly because it was kind of pointed at earlier on in the story when they were talking about opium but then again that could be totally wrong but I'm guessing it's either something like that or else when his parents were murdered by a demon he was like infected or something so it could be that but yeah I'm gonna read on and then oh Jesus I knew it oh my god poor Jem Jem just said this and honestly he's such a sweet soul and he's so wise. Goodness, real goodness has its own sort of cruelty to it. Oh, that man has so many insightful, wise thoughts. I literally just love Will and Jem's relationship with each other. Oh my god. And Will leaning forward to draw the blankets covering Jem's chest and tuck him in. I'm actually gonna cry. Yeah, I'm about to stop reading because I'm about to go to bed. But I'm on page 373, which but I just wanted to say the last chapter we were talking to Nate and Nate was telling all the gang about his time with De Quincey and how all these things came to play basically. And the whole thing just felt like it was extremely info dumpy and that obviously this kind of piece of dialogue and this conversation was so that we 
and also the other shadow hunters learned all the key information they needed to know about Nate's backstory and Tessa's kind of backstory and how they came to be in the shadow hunters world but um I think it was just really info dumpy the way it was done um it was explained through like Nate recounting his experience but it wasn't in a really conversational way they were using or he was using quite um descriptive language that felt like it would only be written in a book like to describe how things looked if you get me like he was retelling this story of how he met Quincy in a quite practiced and extremely efficient and precise way and I feel like if you're after going through a bit of trauma and in this place where people you don't know are and you're scared you wouldn't be exactly remembering every single piece of information and saying it exactly in the right order he's giving all this information to the shadow hunters so that the story can progress but i think it's just a bit of poor writing that it wasn't adjusted in a way to feel like kind of colloquial language and conversational language and tone so i'm gonna leave it at that tonight and read more tomorrow because i'm exhausted if you can't tell but i'm loving this so much and i can't wait to read the rest of the books in the series i shall talk to you all tomorrow when i hopefully hi finish. it's wednesday and it's about half seven and i'm determined i'm gonna finish this book tonight i'm on page 373 like i said in the last clip and i have this much left so i'm about to start reading and i'm so excited i don't know how this is gonna end like i literally have no clue how this is gonna end let's do it i knew nate was a snake oh my god the box of chocolates i remember when i read it I was like, literally two seconds ago, Tessa said how she hates chocolates. Why would her brother send her chocolates? I knew it. I was on something. Nate is a literal snake piece of shit. And I hate him. He better die in the next few pages. Swear to God. Thomas and Agatha being dead. No. That's so sad. But Tessa being the queen that she is. Tessa is so smart. I thought she was smart at being such a queen for doing what she did. And then she goes and actually ends up changing while she was like stabbing herself. So she didn't actually die. Oh, queen. She's so intelligent. Oh my God. And Will and her having a little moment. I want to know more about Will. What is I've lost everything? What is this box he opened in the library and the screams? please let me know like i'm so confused i just finished clockwork angel and um i am confused what is wrong with will what is wrong with will oh my god i'm scared okay okay this is a lot I'm trying to think back to what i said before this clip because i feel like the end and these last few clips have been really convoluted so i'm sorry for that but um basically after that whole ordeal that night at the institute where they were attacked and everything Charlotte asks Tessa to stay at the institute so yay for that but then Will and Tessa have this moment together and Will goes like really bad and like really mean and nasty to her and I'm so like intrigued I really want to know what Will's backstory is and I feel like he's the type of person that hurts and wounds other people purposely to wound himself and it's like if someone gets ever gets too close to him he completely shuts off i feel like we're going to find out more about that in the next book which i'm so excited for and right now still i don't know who i like better if i like will and tessa better if i like um gem and tessa together better because this book was solely kind of focused on Will and Tessa together and I do really like them but I feel like Will needs to work on himself a bit before he can be worthy of Tessa to be honest and Jem I feel like the next book is going to be a lot about Jem and Tessa and them growing together and then the, the epilogue what even was the epilogue what's wrong with Will it was a whirlwind I think I'm definitely going to rate it like I'm just I'm I was gonna say five stars but I think realistically I'm gonna rate it four stars because 
I love the characters, I love the story and everything, but just a few little things that weren't worthy of a five stars in my opinion, like the kind of inconsistencies in the writing and the fact that it just felt quite not really well constructed and then also the kind of plot of the story because I feel like it's the first book the plot of the story wasn't the best um like the plot twist at the end like not at the very very end that one I'm really intrigued and that was good but the plot twist to be like oh the magister isn't who they all thought he was and Nate actually is a backstabbing snake I kind of guessed that like when it happened I was like of course he is but other than that like I, I really did love it and I really did love the characters and I'm so 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 excited to read the next one I'm sorry for like wrapping up this video when I'm like half asleep at like nine o'clock at night um, I think that's all I have to say about this book and I'm so glad I read it and I'm I had so much fun filming this video it was really fun I love doing like spoiler filled vlogs of when I'm reading a book in real time so I can just you know tell you every single one of my thoughts no matter how incoherent they are. I will be continuing on this series for the rest of the Infernal Devices series and I probably will read the other series on that are after that. I actually don't even know what they're called so I'm not even going to try but I do want to do the same kind of thing for that too so look out for those videos too. So yeah thank you for watching, subscribe if you want and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!